So we pay back, we're basically calculating time. How long does it take us to get our money back? Okay? So, how long does it take us here to get our money back that we invested? Our original investment was 1,500. So how long does it take to get back 1,500? When do we get our money back? Even. Which year? Do we get our money back in year one? No. Year two? Sometime in? Year three, right? So it's going to be two point something. Okay? So uh, we look at the uh, calculations, right? And we find out what's the point where this hits zero. Okay? So we can make 1,000, this, what's, we make 1,500, then 423, 581. So 423 plus 581 equals, 423 plus 581 is 1,004. Okay? And then 1,500 minus 1,004 leaves us with 496, right? And then we have here 797, okay? So what we found out is that we need, from this year, we need to get to 496, okay? So what we do is we put 496 over 797 equals, can anybody give me a decimal point for that? What fraction of the year is that? Zero point six. Right, that's okay. So it takes us two point six years to get our money back. Okay? Can you see that? We just found out we know that it's in between year two and year three, right? So where exactly? We can find out where exactly by doing that kind of maths. Okay? We find out that we need 496 from year 3 to get our money back. So we put 496 over the total amount of money we got in that year. We get the decimal point. And the payback period is 2.6 years. That's called payback period. And that means how quickly can we get our money back that we invested at the start? Okay? Uh, so look at the example on the book in page 75. So the example is following the same example for the restaurant, okay? We can make the cash flow year one, cash flow year two, and then we have cumulative cash flow. So cumulative means adding together. So year one minus 110 plus year two, 35.5, is going to be minus 74.5, okay? The next year we made 42.5, cumulative cash flow, minus 32.5. So we still didn't get our money back, okay? But finally, in year three, the number turns positive, 27.5. So therefore, we got our money back sometime between year two and year three. So uh, then we divide the 32.5, which was this number here, we had the 496 here, right? Divide the 32.5 by the total number for that year, 60.5. And we get the same, right? 2.53 years. 0.53. So that is the payback period. So some businesses use the payback period as the decision, making the decision, invest or not. Okay? They will say, how soon do I want to get my money back? Do I want to get my money back after two years, after three years, after five years? Okay? And then once I'm sure I can get my money back, then it's okay. Do you understand that idea? that kind of decision making, yeah. right? Looking at the time it takes me to get back my original investment. So I might say I'm running a restaurant. So who knows, maybe my restaurant will close down after five years or six years, okay? Maybe the people don't want to eat there anymore. Maybe a new restaurants will open up. But at least I know that I will get my money back after two and a half years. Everything after that is profit, okay? So if I can keep my restaurant open for two and a half years, 
I won't lose any money. Okay? Do you understand? So it gives us an idea of the length of time. If my restaurant closes before two and a half years, will I lose money? What if my restaurant closes after year two? Yes, I'll lose money. Okay? But then I'll be in minus. Okay? But if I can keep open and keep in business, right? And my estimates are correct of the business, then it will be okay. Okay? So some people use time. Other people use the money. Okay? We could go on for four, five, most project it's going to be ten years, right? We're going to go for ten years. I just did this so we can do the calculation, right? But we saw with Disney, Disney was ten years, okay? But just for you guys to practice the calculation, ten years is going to be a little bit long, okay? You'll have to calculate all the cash flows for ten years and do all the things for ten years. But that's the normal way we do the, the cash flow. So do you have any question about the NPV or payback? If you don't understand, ask me a question, please. Now, okay, maybe the other students don't understand either. You may have to answer that kind of question later in the test. So now is the chance to ask a question. Okay, so. Then let's move on to the next decision rule, rule which is IRR. So turn to page 79 in your book. on the internet, online, okay? So, what it is, is that we find out what is the rate of return when the NPV is zero. So we do this calculation the other way around. We do this calculation, but we find the answer here as zero, okay? The answer is zero here, so we don't have these numbers, okay? Right, this one is the same, but we have the answer here of zero. And then we ask ourselves, if the answer is zero, what is I? Okay? What is I? Do you understand? Then if I is more than 12%, yes. Right? If I is less than 12%, then no. Okay? What is the I which makes equals to zero? Okay. Do you want to do that calculation? No. Find I? No. Huh? No, right? That takes too long to find I because we have to go backwards and do the reverse calculations. So we just use the computer program. Okay? And the graph can look like this. I did an example. You can look at page 80. Look at page 80. Okay? So what we do here, this is an online IRR calculator. Okay? So we can go online. And just type in online or IRR calculator. Do you think I'm saying IOO? Am I saying IOO or IRR? I, 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 Americans say R. I'm not American, right? Maybe I could say I R. I just say IRR. Okay. People usually think I'm saying O. Okay. So we say. IRR <laughs> online free. Okay? So this is what just you we can just use that. Okay, just put in the numbers. The cash flow, right? Put in the cash flow and here. Right? Year investment. Put in the cash flow and press calculate IRR at the bottom. Okay? That's what I did. Okay, I put in year one, cash flow. Cash out, cash in. Okay, cash out, cash in, cash in, cash in. Total inflow, total outflow. outflow. What is the internal rate of return which will make it uh, a zero? Okay, which will make 
MPV of zero, it's going to be 11.34%. Okay? So, uh, if we just look here, we can see, uh, we can read just at the top of the page, right? The IRR is the most commonly used measure for deciding whether to invest in a project or not. The reason is, IRR is absolute. NPV, we're going to talk about later, comparing NPV and IRR, but one difference is, NPV is just dollar number. IRR is percentage, okay? So percentage uh, can help us to see a little bit more accurately. So, uh, <coughs> we can see the advantages of the IRR. It has a, it's a relative number, a percentage, okay? And it can be used in cases where its discount rate is unknown. Okay? So, the IRR is compared to the discount rate. If the IRR is greater than the discount rate, the project is a good one. Alternatively, the project should be rejected. Okay? So if we find the IRR for our, our one here, okay, that's what you guys need to do at home for homework, right? Use, the, use an IRR calculator and find the IRR for this project. Okay? Just put in the cash flows, this one in the cash out, this one in the cash in. Okay, does everybody have a smartphone? Maybe you can do it on your smartphone if you find the IRR calculator. But otherwise, you can do it at home for homework, right? So that is on the page number. Uh, the next question, right? Number seven. Number seven says estimate the IRR using the online or IRR calculator. Okay. So you need to find the online IRR calculator, put in the values from question 5 okay, for the cash flows, and tell me in the next class, what is the internal rate of return? Is it going to be higher than 12 or lower than 12? We have a positive NTV, so is it going to be higher than 12 or lower than 12? Higher than 12, right? Should be giving us 13%, something like that. Right? So we use the IRR for Disney too. Okay? In Disney, we saw that the IRR for Disney was 12.35%. This was higher than Disney's cost of capital at 8.6%. Okay? Internal rate of return means that's the rate of return I'm making every year. Okay? I'm making a 12% return every year. 12% okay? profit a year. Okay? And my cost is 8%. Okay? So my profit is higher than my cost. Okay? So this is basically telling me the percent profit I'm making every year. So uh, the IRR and the MPV will yield similar results most of the time. So MPV is positive, IRR is positive. Okay? IRR can get messed up a little bit where in the middle we have, IRR works well where we have just one cash outflow at the start and then mostly positive, right? But if it's all mixed up like positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, then IRR might not work well. Okay? So MPV might be better in that case. But that's an unusual case. That's an unusual case. So IRR and MPV have more or less a similar result. Okay. So, do you have any question about IRR? No. So, uh, let's look at page eighty-one. We're going to talk about the mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive project. So, mutually exclusive means uh, that we wouldn't run the two projects at the same time, okay? 
company has to choose. Do this project or do this project. So, for example, we can either invest our money in new technology or we can hire new staff. Okay? We have a choice. Two different things we can do. But we, can't, we don't have enough money to do both of them. So we have to choose. Which one should we do? Okay? So, uh, there are two reasons why projects are mutually exclusive. We can see on page 81. Number one, we have different projects to fulfill the same objective. Okay? So that's what I just explained. Okay? Uh, the second one is capital rationing. Okay? Capital rationing means that we are unable to invest in projects because we don't have enough money. Okay? So, because we don't have enough money, we have to choose between one project or the other. Okay? In the first case, we, had, we want to do the same thing. We can either buy the new technology or hire new staff. Okay? We can't do both for doing the same thing. Okay? In the second case, we don't have enough money. So we have to choose Disney, for example, Disney has to choose Rio Disney in uh, Brazil, okay? Or making a new movie, okay? Because Disney doesn't have enough money. You can either make a new movie or make the Rio Disney, okay? So we have to make a decision. We have to compare the projects, okay? So we have to adapt the NPV and IRR to compare the projects. So we can use NPV and IRR to compare the projects. So we can say this project has a higher NPV. This project has a higher IRR. So let's take this project. But of course, uh, we have the problem of size and time to think about. So let's look at the problem of time first. So the projects may have different times. Okay. So. One could be a two-year project, the other one could be a four-year project, okay? So how are we going to compare four-year project versus two-year project? Or for example, the movie. The movie is going to be two or five-year project, okay? But the theme park is 30 years. So how can we compare them if they're different times, okay? So the first way we can compare them is project replication. Do you understand replication? So we're here on page 82, right? What does replicate mean? To replicate something. What does it mean to replicate? To copy? Yes, to do again. Copy again. Okay? So, if we have the project for two, just two years, and we have a project for four years, okay? Replication means just again. simply one and two again, okay, for three and four, okay? And then we can compare the project like that, okay? So we can look at the example in the book, okay? We can see here, uh, for example, we have a two-year project and a four-year project, okay? Project A has a two-year life with the cash flow of 200 in year one, and 400 in year two. The cost of capital is 5% and the initial investment is 300. Project B has a four year life with the cash flow of 200 in year one, 300 in year two, 400 in year three, and 400 in year four. The cost of capital is also 5% and the initial investment is 600. So which project should we do? Which one has a higher NPV? Which one has a higher IRR, right? Is it fair to compare, just calculate the NPV for two years and calculate the NPV for four years? Not really, right? One project is for four years, one project is for two years. So we have to make the same time. So we can see that for the project A, we do the year zero minus 300. Year one, 200. Year two, 400. But year two is also going to be the replicated year zero. So we also have minus 300 here, okay? Uh, year 3, we have, again, 200. Year 4, 400, okay? And we use the 
if the cost of capital is 5%, year 1 is divided by 1.05, year 2 divided by 1.1, year 3, 1.6, okay? So we make the calculation and we get our NPV, 477. If we only made an NPV for two years, it would be 253, okay? So we just imagine that we repeat this project again. We do the project for two years, and then we repeat it again for another two years, okay? And our total NPV will be 477. On the other hand, for the project B, we just do the regular, what we just practiced, the example, okay? Cash flows in each year divided by the uh, one, plus the interest rate times N is going to give us 533. So now we can compare the two projects. Which one are we going to take? B. Project B. Okay, that's the higher NPV. Do you have any question about that? No. The project uh, replication? So, you need to do question 10 in your book. Question 10, you're going to compare two projects at different times. Okay? Here is project A. This is project A, year 0, year 1, and year 2. This is project B, year 0, two years, year 4. Okay? So, you can use... Uh, the next page, it has discounted cash flows for A and discounted cash flows for B. Okay, so answer the question. And just tell me, which project are you going to take, A or B? Both of them have the same cost of capital. Okay, so page 93 in your book. We're going to practice the NPV again, okay? NPV this time, different times. Page 93, question 10. learning, it means even if you're not sure, you have to try, okay? You sh students shouldn't just sit there for three minutes or four minutes and wait for me to tell them the answer, okay? That's not learning. We're not going to learn that way. In order to learn through active learning, you have to try. Do you understand? Try. Even though you don't know the answer, you need to try, okay? You need to look back in the book, look at the example, and make an effort. Then, after the teeth you make an effort and you make a mistake, then the teacher shows you the correct answer, then you learn, and then you remember, okay? But if you don't try, and you just wait for the teacher to tell you the answer, it doesn't go into your brain, you don't learn well. Do you understand the difference? That's why it's important to try. Okay, so I shouldn't see students just sitting there looking at the book. Okay, we already did this calculation. We discussed it on the page. So, make an effort, try to do it, think about it, and try to solve the problem. Yes?
the equation for present value is future value over 1 plus the interest rate to time. Okay, you should know this by now. Okay? So year 1, time is 1. Year 2, time is 2. Year 3, time is 3. So that's why it's a different number every year. Okay? So use this equation to find the present value of the cash flow. If you have a question, put up your hand and ask me. No, you just need to find. You don't need to do anything. Okay? You just this is the value of the cash flow, and you need to find the present value. That is the equation for present value, right? Can you find this one also is minus 40 in here too. You're missing minus 40 in here too. Okay? So apart from that is correct. Then we like the present value. Yes? Why should we subtract this number? Where? Year two. year two. We're replicating. In year zero, minus 300. So we're doing the project again. So we still have the outflow. Again. Yes. Yes, because this one is four years and this one is two years. Yes, this one is replicated. I explained. Repeat it. Okay? So I have some questions about the replication, right? We have zero. We have an outflow. Okay? Minus 300. Then if it's replicated, it's going to be zero here. Okay? So minus 300 here again. Okay? We do the project again with the outflow, inflow, inflow, outflow, inflow, inflow. Okay? Do you have any questions? Okay. First find present value for B. Okay? What's the present value here? Year zero for B. What's the present value of minus nine? What is the present value of minus nine? My, yes. What is the present value of minus nineteen year zero? What's year zero here? Yes. So why did it? The next one. What's the present value of thirty in year one? Is the present value thirty? Oh, 30 over. What? <laughs> yes. Okay. So you need to do the calculation. Find the answer. Okay. So let's finish that question for homework. Okay. And also the question 10. Uh, the uh, question 7, find the IRR, okay? So question 7 and finish question 10 as well. So I'll see you in the Friday class.